Good morning, everyone, morning. and welcome. Good morning, good morning. It's lovely to hear you all. It's, it's, um, it's lovely to see you all in the church. Hello to those of you watching the live stream. Really good to, to have you with us, or watching the recording of the service later on. I think I, think I kind of know everybody here, but my name is Simon Crouch, and it's lovely to, to be with you. And a special warm um, welcome to any visitors we might have us with us today. Of course, after the service, there will be refreshments served, courtesy of, I'm not sure who today, but thank you very much in advance, and I do hope you'll be able to stay, um, and we can just spend a time sort of catching up with, with each other as well, which would be lovely. The 17th to the 23rd of June has been designated as World Refugee Week, with the theme this year being Our Home. From the places we gather to share meals to our collective home, planet Earth, everyone is invited to celebrate what our home means to them. Now this is the final week, if you like, the final day of Refugee Week, and it's usually referred to as Sanctuary Sunday. It's a day when churches around the world remember and pray for refugees and displaced people. Currently, the United Nations estimate that there are over 110 million displaced people around the world. 110 million. That's the highest number that's ever been recorded in human history. And behind that large number, there are human stories, of course. Stories of individual people forced from their homes by war, disaster, and persecution. Some of those sto stories have led people to seek sanctuary here in Scotland, making new homes and starting new lives. So we'll be thinking about what sanctuary means to us. And we'll be listening to a couple of examples from uh, people who have settled here in Scotland. So now let us find sanctuary in our worship today, a time of quiet thought and reflection during which time we invite the Holy Spirit of Pentecost to come amongst us, to renew us and to refresh us. So let us come to, uh, together and worship God this morning. Our call to worship uh, and some of our prayers have been written by refugees and people seeking asylum who come from diverse backgrounds. So our call to worship, again, a responsive call to worship. The Lord is knocking at the door of our hearts he wants us to enjoy an intimate fellowship with him. Oh Lord, help us to develop an everlasting relationship with you. Lord, we want to enjoy fellowship with you in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, help us to experience God's presence. See you in our hearts today. We delight in gathering as the family of faith. Open minds and open hearts. We celebrate this day of life. Together we will sing your praises. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is so great as you? You are the God who works wonders. You have displayed your might among the peoples whom you have redeemed with your strong arm. We approach you as your faithful people. Our ears are open to your word. Our hearts are open to your comfort, renewal and challenge. Pour out your truth upon us as we worship in your name. And our first hymn is a perfect one to begin our service on Sanctuary Sunday. Here to the house of God we come, home of the people of the way. If you follow it in the hymn book, it's number 195. Here to the house of God we come. Thank you, Alison.
be a, a new hymn to many of us, but I hope you recognize the, the tune. It's just the words are so appropriate for today. So as I mentioned earlier on, we're going to seek sanctuary in our worship today. So I'm just going to read out a short poem by David Adam called Sanctuary. We come to your sanctuary to sit in silence, in singleness of heart to seek you, in sureness of spirit to serve you. Saviour, supply our needs, still our hearts, satisfy our spirits, that we may surrender our souls and be strengthened by you. Now our first reading this morning is taken from Psalm 9. Um, and between us, I've kind of adapted it slightly. Between us, we're going to read verses 9 to 14, and then again 18 to 20. So again, it's a responsive psalm. Psalm 9. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek. Sing the praises of the Lord, enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done. He does not ignore the cries of the afflicted. Let's see how my enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death. Then I may declare your praises in the gates of daughter Zion. And there rejoice in your salvation. God will never forget the needy. The hope of the afflicted will never perish. Arise, Lord, do not let mortals triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, Lord. Let the nations know that they are only mortal. Amen. The original idea of Sanctuary Sunday was to provide an opportunity to reflect, to pray, and to take action to make every church and house of prayer a sanctuary where all are treated with a warm welcome, generous hospitality, and protected from harm, which of course we want for all our places of worship. But sanctuary can mean so much more than that. As we mark Sanctuary Sunday today, we want to consider the scriptures and ask how we can be the hands and feet of God and offer sanctuary to refugees and asylum seekers in our midst? How can we embrace the joys and talents that sit alongside their pain and their loneliness? Sanctuary Sunday is a special Sunday set aside to pray for the stranger in our midst. And say to the refugee and to the asylum seeker, we see you. And there is a God who sees you too. Now we're going to come close to our caring and loving God and offer him our prayers of approach and confession. As I mentioned earlier, some of the prayers have been written by, by uh, people that have settled in this country from overseas. There is a response in the prayer, I will say God of life, and the response is I believe and trust in you. So let us come close to God. Let us come and find sanctuary in our worship this morning. Let us pray. God of hope, we come into your presence this morning with confidence that you will meet us here. Where there is sadness, bring joy. Where there is tiredness, bring refreshment. Where there is despair, bring a renewed sense of hope. Let this time together be a sanctuary, a safe haven for us, a home for holy words and songs and prayers as we devote ourselves to you. God of life. Believe and trust in you. God of grace, we have come for a glimpse of your kingdom of kindness, a world where love rules over all, a world where enemies embrace, a world where the distinctions between friend and foe evaporate in the light of your love. Knowing that you have the power to transform us, we give our lives over to you, body, soul, mind, and spirit. God of life. I believe and trust in you. 
God of justice, help us to listen to the voices that say things are not as they should be. Tear down the veil of fear and lies so that we see the sins being committed against people because of the color of their skin. Help us to trust you to do good work in us, to give us a renewal of the mind when it comes to facing racial injustice, past and present. God of life, I believe and trust in you. We try to live ordered, organized lives with good principles and lofty goals. But then there we stand at the end of it, our days scattered with broken dreams, words that should not have been spoken, actions we wish we could take back, and many, many things that we did not do. Be our grace, Lord. Give us grace to see with your eyes. Instead of enemies, we will see friends. Instead of closed doors, we will find keys in our hands. Instead of closed minds, we will think fresh, new possibilities. Clenched with our own hatreds and hang-ups, you will offer a place to relax, to breathe. In the most parched places of our life, you are bubbling up like living water. God of life, believe and trust in you. Lord God, you have shown us such love and stretched out your arms to draw us into your embrace. Yet so often we fail to show that love within our lives or recognize its source. Forgive our short-sightedness for the times that we have failed to see your love in the generosity of a friend or stranger. The shoulder to cry on, the willing ear to listen, a word of encouragement, hold in our hand that extra mile. You offer us a place of safety and security, a sanctuary where we can love as you love care as you care. Seek justice, mercy, and truth in a world that has yet to feel the warmth of your embrace. Forgive us and enable us to be the people who we could be, that your name might be on the lips of all people. God of life, believe and trust in you. We ask all our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Now I'm going to ask Ali to come up and read for us. Thank you, Ali. Good morning. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 18, reading from verses 1 to 11. And you'll find that on 114 in the Church Bible. In Corinth. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. But when the Jews opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am clear of my responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Then Paul left the synagogue and went to next door to the house of Titius Justus, a worshipper of God. Crispus, the synagogue ruler, and his entire household believed in the Lord, and many of the Corinthians who heard him believed and were baptized. One night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one is going to attack and harm you, because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. The second reading is Mark chapter 4, reading from verses 35 to 41. Jesus calms a storm, and it's on page 1006 of the Church Bible, 35 to 41. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. 
They took him along just as he was in the boat. There was also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The the disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Amen. Thanks be to God for this reading of his holy word. That's great, Ali. Thank you very much indeed. I love your bottle, by the way. (laughs) So today is known as Sanctuary Sunday. So what do we mean? What do we think by that meaning, sanctuary? If we were to close our eyes and think of that word, what picture would come to mind? A place of safety and security, perhaps? A special place that you go in times of stress. We've all got one. That special place that we go to. It might be in the house itself. It might be in the garden. It might be up on the hillside. It might be overlooking the sea, wherever it is, that special place that we go. Now, I am probably now, I'm going to start with an apology. They always say, don't never start with apology, but I am, because I'm not going to upset anybody here. And this, and, and this is not necessarily going to work with, with uh, you all around there. Um, but I have, I have a sign that my, my daughter uh, bought me. Uh, for I think it was my birthday last year um, and I'm going to upset quite a lot of people here so I'm ready for the humps okay that says Strathdon is my happy place and now you're going oh no it's not I'm sure if I, if I had lots of things, I could have Took, I could have Kushni, I could have Afford, I could have all these happy places, but that's mine, my happy, my happy place. And we've all got a happy place, haven't we? That was kind of okay, that one. Now, this is, this is the last one that she bought me, and, and this is where you feel senility kind of growing ever nearer. Because I, I've, I've got a thing, as probably most of us have, about passwords. Yeah? Let's look at the nodding heads around. A lot of, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, sh- I shall read this out and then I shall show you. It's a conversation. First of all, it says, hacker. I have all your passwords. Me? OMG, thank you. What are they? I'm not proud of that one, but I'm sure she meant it, she meant it with, with love, which is good. So we've all got that place that we can go and escape to. Now, over the centuries, of course, people have seen our churches as a place of sanctuary, a place to, where we can go and pray to God and be near to God. And I suppose in the days when people lived in rough structures, sometimes alongside the livestock in the croft, To walk into an abbey or a monastery would have just gone, wow. They would have been filled with awe and expectation. What a wonderful place. And they would have been sure that God was living in that building. Now there's an ancient tradition across the world that holy places are also considered places of sanctuary for those at risk of persecution. Remember the, um, the 19th century Gothic novel, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. A Quasimodo, the deformed bell ringer in, the, in that novel, was famously called for sanctuary in Notre Dame Cathedral as he, as he was being chased by the mob. But sanctuary within the, within the Christian context is also important as well. Providing shelter providing a place of safety and security. Now I know in the Sunday school 
we have been following a series called New Testament Heroes. Yeah? Doing some more New Testament Heroes? Yeah? Okay. And I know because I, I remember starting that one off. Last month we looked at Paul. Uh, we started with Peter, of course, that great rock of the Christian church. Then we looked at Paul, Stephen, Philip. And today we're going to finish the series by looking at Priscilla and Aquila. Who are they? I hear you cry. What do we know all about them? Well, we know that they were originally from Rome, and they moved to Corinth, and then finally on to Ephesus. And they made their living by making tents. They were tent makers. They're mentioned or referred to many times in the New Testament, but always as a couple. You, d you never hear of one of them or the other one. They're always a couple. And they complement each other, utilizing each other's strengths and abilities, and they make a very effective team. Priscilla and Aquila, who'd just been expelled from Rome by Emperor Claudius's decree, met Paul in Corinth about 50 to 52 AD during his second missionary journey. Now, just even in the snippet that Ali read to us about, you know, from, from the Acts of the Apostles, you can see that um, Paul, the it was quite a testing time, this particular visit in Corinth. It wasn't all sweetness and light by any means. And he met a lot of opposition. But he was very grateful to Priscilla and Aquila as they opened their home and they offered him sanctuary, providing a place for him. At one time, Paul was set upon by the ruling Jewish authorities and dragged into court on some jumped-up charges. So Paul knew that he was, had to watch it. He was a bit of a, a marked man because he was making such an impression and they didn't like it. But he must have felt safe and supported by Priscilla and Aquila there as he stayed with them for 18 months. And in return for his home and his food and everything, Paul shared with them his wealth of wisdom and knowledge about God, about Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And they listened very intently. Now there was a, uh, a disciple of John the Baptist called Apollos. Quite a young man by the sound of it. He was, he was preaching, but they didn't quite think that he had the full story. So rather than making a scene with him, and rather than sort of saying, oh, no, you're, 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 you're teaching, you know, not, you're not telling the whole story, they took him in. A bit like they did with Paul, they took him in. And they sat with him, and he was with them for some time, and learning all about what Paul had um, taught them. So they were very much a team. And when you're looking at it in, in, um, in Sunday school, you can have a look at it and think about what it means to be in a team. Um, and you can see in, in, the, in this passage from Romans, you can see how much Paul actually appreciated that. Romans 16, verses 3 to 5. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus. They risk their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Greet also the church that meets in their house. So they had a house church. And when they moved on um, into Rome as well, they, they started one of the first house churches there. So a lot of the early church, surprising how much you would have, you know... Um, been very grateful for them. So they provided that place of safety and security. Do you remember what I said they did for a living? Tents. So where do they live? In a tent. So their church was no mighty building made of stone, no temple, no gothic masterpiece which soared up to the skies and pronounced the glory of God but it was a tent. And in that tent, the welcome that they gave to those, that early church, was so important. And that's 
what sanctuary is all about, providing that welcome, providing that place of security. So I'd be very interested to hear, over coffee maybe, what, what you've come up with in the, in the Sunday school. But now, in our, we're going to sing again, and we're going to ask for our Lord of hope to create a sanctuary within us by being with us throughout our day. Lord of all hopefulness. If you follow the hymn book, it's number 166. Thank you, Alison. Sanctuary Sunday. Now, many congregations across Scotland have welcomed people from all over the world who are seeking asylum, as well as displaced people, a lot from Ukraine, of course, from Afghanistan and also from Syria. Tatiana Bondarenko arrived in, from Ukraine in May 2022 after fleeing her house in Odessa and found a wonderful Christian family to live with in Edinburgh. She writes, I am from Odessa, Ukraine, and moved to Edinburgh in May 2022 due to the war in my country. My son and daughter-in-law remained in Ukraine as well as some of my friends. In Edinburgh, God gave me a wonderful family that took me in and a wonderful church called Bellevue Chapel. I'm grateful to the Lord for his support and hope. 
She writes, on the morning of February the 24th, 2022, forever changed the lives of my people. A full-scale war was on our doorstep. The days of mourning, grief, and despair had come. Days when you do not know what awaits you. Days when all your plans are destroyed in an instant. Days when you are constantly afraid for your loved ones. Days when you can lose everything in an instant. What, help, what can help in such a situation? Who can help in such a situation? I probably, like all people, experienced fear at the beginning of the war. On the first night, I didn't know how to go to bed. What awaited us? The only thing that gave peace and hope was the Lord and my faith in God. Being in God's love. Perhaps I can say in the words of David from Psalm 86, Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call on you every day. It was prayer and hope in God that supported me. So on this sanctuary Sunday, where is our sanctuary? Like I talked about before, is it a place that we go to? Or is it something else? Cast in our minds back a few years, of course, during the dreaded days of, of lockdowns, our house became a wee bit of a sanctuary because we were confined to it. And even now, even now, sort of nearly four years, four years on from that, or over four years on from that, some people are still that lost a bit of confidence going out are still not 100% back to where they were. So where else can our sanctuary be? Where else is there a special place that we go to in times of stress, in times of worry, in times when we feel alone or threatened maybe? As I mentioned, is it a place in the house? It's not a cupboard under the stairs or anything like that that we go to, thinking of Harry Potter. For Tatiana and the Council of Refugees from Ukraine, their safe place wasn't safe anymore. So they had to seek out somewhere else, a dream, a vision, a hope, as they journeyed onwards. Is that what sanctuary is for us? But where do we go when we're feeling alone? Where is our personal sanctuary? It might not be the same as everybody else in the house. It might be just somewhere that we go. We sit a favorite chair, for example, in the corner where you switch the light off and you sit there in silence. German Swiss poet, novelist, and painter Hermann Hesse wrote, within you there is a stillness and a sanctuary to which you can retreat at any time and be yourself. Within you, there is a stillness and a sanctuary that we can retreat at any time. Interesting thought. The problem is that sometimes when we find our stillness and our sanctuary within ourselves. If we're not in the right frame of mind, we can stay there. It leads people down to a deep, dark path, that spiral going down into depression and despair. But there is a place. We all have that place. The account of Jesus being asleep in the boat as he and disciples stopped, crossed over the Sea of Galilee, is a very familiar story. I'm sure we all know the story. We've all heard it. I mean, it's a favorite. They've all gone now. It's a favorite of Sunday school because um, often the Sunday school teachers would let the children act it out. And, of course, there would be the, the, the real wise little lad there who would vie for the position of Jesus because he spent most of, his, uh, most of the scene asleep on a cushion. The Sea of Galilee is 600 feet below sea level and is surrounded by hills. Some of us might have been there. I haven't, but I do want to. Some of us might have seen it. 
And people living near the coasts, they know well that the winds blow across the land and they intense, intensify close to the sea, causing violent and unexpected storms. But the fishermen, the traders that worked and plied the, the Sea of Galilee will have known all about that. They will know to have expected those storms just coming out of nothing. The disciples in Mark's account had no hesitation in waking Jesus up in their fear. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? What a statement is that? Don't you care if we drown? Maybe they could have put in a little bit better than that. They're going shaking him too. Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? What? Now, given the fact that at least four of them were four of the disciples were fishermen by profession. They must have experienced a storm like this before, but perhaps the severity of this particular storm was more than they've ever dealt with. Thinking about that, of course, on the television we see many refugees and migrants trying to cross the English Channel on makeshift boats. But so often a storm rises up, a large wave hits the boat, it's turned upside down, the sea engulfs everyone. And those who thought that they were safe and on their way to a place of safety lose their life, lose their children, their families, their dreams, their hopes, and their place of refuge. After Jesus has said, okay, fine, Calm down. He brought order to chaos. He asked them the question, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Perhaps he was disappointed by that reaction. Because, I mean, these had been the disciples that had been with Jesus. They'd seen the things he'd done. They'd heard him talking to them. They'd witnessed a lot of the miracles. They'd seen things. So what? What more? could he have done? Do you still have no faith? Despite everything that had happened, do they still have no faith? And what about that last phrase? Who is this man? Uh -huh. Who is this man? Even the wind and waves obey him. Who is this man? If they don't know, if they were there in the boat with him at that time, if they didn't know who he was, they saw that, that would have been months of, one of many miracles and signs that he would have given. If they didn't know, where do we see ourselves in that boat? Are we at the bow? looking forward, forging the way ahead as the huge waves crash onto the deck, navigating the best route and avoiding the other boats? Are we at the stern, perhaps, steering the boat into and over the waves, trying desperately to stop the boat capsizing, hanging on tightly to the tiller and fighting with the swell? Or are we clinging on for dear life to the side of the boat, hanging on so that we do not fall overboard. Perhaps, perhaps we are asleep on the cushion by the side of Jesus, calm and peaceful, as we know who this man is, and we place our trust in him to see us through. I asked the question just now, where do we see ourselves on the boat? Where would we like to see ourselves on the boat? And do we need, what do we need to do to be able to reposition ourselves? 19th century American Quaker Thomas Raymond Kelly wrote, Deep within us all, there is an amazing inner sanctuary of the soul, a holy place, a divine center, a speaking voice 
to which we may continuously return. Eternity is at our hearts, pressing upon our time-torn lives, warming us with intimations of an outstanding destiny, calling us home into itself. I know I've talked about my signs here. I have another sign at home that reads, Peace. It does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. It means to be in the midst of those things and still be calm. That inner sanctuary of the soul, perhaps. So yes, sanctuary can be a physical place where we go to meet God. But sanctuary can also be within us where God comes to meet us in the stillness of the moment. How can we find our sanctuary when we most need it? How can we escape to our own sanctuary in times of personal tragedy, where all you want to do is run and hide away? That's the keys to our sanctuary. Immerse ourselves in the word of God. Pick up the book. If you don't know where to start, always go to the book of Psalms. For me, that is the most perfect book that gives us a whole range of emotions. Open the book, let it fall open, and see where it does. I'm falling on Psalm 6 at the moment. Pick it up. Read it. Think about it. Pray about it. And you will find your inner sanctuary. After all, Jesus said, Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And Jesus will be there in our own sanctuary waiting for us to go and meet him. Amen. And next him, we hear the voice of Jesus calling to us. Number 540, I heard the voice of Jesus say. Thank you, Alison.
God. We're going to dedicate our offerings to, to the glory of God. So I'll invite us to say the, the prayer of dedication together. We pray together saying, Eternal and ever-blessed God, accept these offerings which now we bring in this and other ways. Help us to give to you what you most desire, which is the love of our hearts and the service of our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now with our prayers of, of thanksgiving and intercession. If you remember what we said at the very beginning of our service, there is a quiet time for quiet prayer, private prayer within that. So please, just think of the people who we are praying for at the moment. Response is God of life again and hear our prayer. So let us come close to our loving Father God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your great gift of love, the love which we are able to share with those round about us, which gives us a sense of self-worth and belonging, which enriches our lives in so many ways. We thank you for your love which defies all expression, constant, total, inexhaustible, flowing out to us like a never-ending stream, giving us life in the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, we, we thank you for, your, for loving us before we ever loved you and for kin continuing to love us even when we fail to love you in return. Deepen our love for you and one another. Help us to be faithful and true in all our relationships and most especially in our relationship with you. God of life, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your son had to flee with his parents and seek sanctuary in a foreign land. Be with all those today who are fleeing conflict, war, or poverty, and seeking a new way of life in a new country. Give them strength and hope, and keep them close to you. Almighty God, your son had nowhere to lay his head. Have compassion on those who are homeless and far from home or lived in crowded conditions. Give them strength and hope, and keep them close to you. We pray for all those who are going through tough situations, that God will intervene and visit them, that they will experience divine encounter and their burdens be lifted off their shoulders as they cry to him for help. We pray that God will, will, will be close to all who are persecuted because they believe in him. May he console those who are suffering and living in fear of religious persecution. Lord Jesus, be with the unjustly accused and illegally detained. Give them courage to face the beatings, patience to bear the lies, and hope to see beyond the bars and the barbed wire. God of life, our prayer. We pray for all nations at war. We continue to pray for all those in Ukraine and living through the ongoing war with Russia. And we pray for families who have been separated from their loved ones as they fight for the freedom of their country. We pray for families in Israel and Palestine who wait anxiously for news that their loved one is still held hostage after eight months of fighting. We pray for parents who are trying to protect their children from bullets and bombs. And we pray for all those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. We pray for all refugees, many seeking a place of safety and security for their families. We pray for all those who are forced to take dangerous journeys or face being exploited by criminal gangs as they in desperation seek a better life for their children. We pray for all who are homeless without shelter or a place to call home. God of life, hear our prayer. And now in the silence of our hearts, Lord, we, we come to you with our own personal prayers. And all those that you know to us who need God's love in their lives today. God of life, hear our prayer. 
We remember in our hearts and minds the names and faces of all those whom we have loved and lost and have now come into the peace of your nearer presence. For the saints in glory and for our loved ones departed, hold them close to you as we hold them close in our hearts to us until the time will come when we shall be reunited in your glorious presence. We ask all these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us how to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now there are a number of notices today, but you've all got them. They're on the order of service, or in, uh, in the order of service, so there's, there's uh, not much really I'm, I'm going to read out. Um, I would like to, to make two things. That the prayer diary uh, that Alison Hunter has, has come up with for, for the month of June, there are copies available it's, it's an ideal to, to, to sort of um, regiment ourselves to be thinking about every day for prayer because it's the way to, to become close to our God. So again, I would encourage you to, to take one of those away with you and, and use it with your own personal prayers. The newsletter is due out very, very soon. Well, say very soon, next couple of months. Um, and we started to get together and put articles together and get a framework of, of what's going to be included. So if anybody, anybody's got any interesting stories, any, any uh, articles or anything that you would like to, to include in our newsletter, then please, please, please start thinking about them um, and, and putting them together. Um, a couple of uh, community cafes, I said I'm not going to mention them all, but I will mention these. Lumsden School uh, Community Cafe on Tuesday. Um, and Riney School on Wednesday morning. So again, it'd be lovely to, to see you at those. Next week, of course, is back to normal, but we do have our, um, our services at 10 o'clock here, and it's just on 11.30 at Riney. And then after that, you have, I believe, here in Alfred, you have your family picnic, don't you? I don't know. I'm afraid I won't be at it, because I should be at Cushney Games, where we have our stall, don't we, Jean? Yes. So again, you, you have split loyalties next week. Go and enjoy your picnic, but afterwards come up to Cushney and join in the games, which would be, which would be great fun. And then the, the, the following Sunday, I will just mention that quickly, the first Sunday in July is our normal shared service of worship. And for this time, this is the first time that we're having one of those in Strathdon. So I hope it's a beautiful sunny day like this. And when you come up to Strathdon, bring your picnic with you. Because we'll have a picnic lunch, and if it's nice, we can sit outside, we'll have tea, coffee, and, and whatever, won't we, Helen? Yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, so it'd be lovely to, lovely to see you then. That's a couple of weeks, of course. So many thanks for joining us here in Afford for our service for Sanctuary Sunday. Alison, thank you as always for playing for us. And Ali, thank you so much for, for, for reading for us. And I should say, Mike, thank you very much for doing all the technical bits and pieces. It's, it's much appreciated, it really, really is. I do hope you'll be able to stay for, for, for tea, coffee, and fine pieces afterwards. In our service today, we've been reflecting on the meaning of sanctuary. We've moved from the standpoint, perhaps, of sanctuary just being a physical place where we can go and hide, to sanctuary being a state of mind gained through our relationship with our loving Father God, a place that we can go to in times of trouble. Immerse ourselves, as we said in the word of God, and trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. He will take us by the hand. He will calm, calm the stormy seas which sometimes surround us, as he is the sure foundation of our faith. As we leave here today, as we finish our service and those of us are on, online going our different ways, I'd like the God of peace to go with us. So after the benediction, we'll remain standing and we'll sing, may the God of peace go with us, which is number 786. But now we're going to stand and sing our final hymn, Christ is made, the sure foundation, number 200 in the book.
God bless us, our God, who called the world into being, who breathed us into life, who provides us with new strength. May God bless us, our God, whose love does not know borders or walls, whose justice will come, our God who casts down the mighty from their thrones and lifts up the lowly. May God bless us, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. May the storms within and around you be stilled. May you recall the depth of God's love and the breadth of God's power. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and all those who we love this day and forevermore. Amen.